Here we're going to be looking at purchase commitments. Those are agreements to buy inventories in advance, like weeks in advance, months in advance, or years in advance. Now this is where the purchaser or the buyer enters into a formal, non-cancelable purchase contract. The contract is executory in nature. Neither party has fulfilled its part here of the contract. The buyer recognizes no asset or liability at the date here of the contract. However, it should be disclosed in our financial statement. So this is when we in initiated this contract here and nothing has been fulfilled as far as this contract. So let's go and look at our example here. Uh, example here, Corporation A entered into a non-cancelable contract here during 20X1 here for delivery in 20X2 here. And let's look at our details here. So what what would we'd be looking at starting out here uh, looking at 1231X1 here where Corporation A has an outstanding non-cancelable purchase commitment here for 80,000 gallons at $3 per gallon of a raw material used in manufacturing. Corporation A prices the raw material inventory at cost or market, whichever is lower here. So we're going to go through the different examples or scenarios here for reporting this uh, uh, contract here on 1231X1 here. So looking at case one here, this is where the market price here is greater than the contracted price. So on 1231X1 here, let's assume here that the market price is $3.30 a gallon, which is greater greater than $3 a gallon here, which is the contracted price. So we have an excess of market price here over the contract price. And this is a gain contingency, but it cannot be recognized until realized. So we disclose this as a footnote here in our financial statement. So looking at our uh, amounts here, our contracted price, well, we had 80,000 gallons at $3 per gallon. That's worth $240,000. And then looking at our market price, again, 80,000 gallons here at $3 dollars and 30 cents a gallon that's the market price equals two hundred and sixty four thousand dollars so you can see we have an unrealized gain here contracted price it's worth two hundred and forty thousand dollars here market price we could get two hundred and sixty four thousand dollars for that so let's go and look at how we uh, how we'd handle that here so what we would do is all we do is put a note in our financial statements at 1231 x1 this is where the we'd note here the contracts for the purchases of raw materials materials in 20x2 have been executed in the amount here of $240,000. The market price of such raw materials on 1231x1 here is $264,000. So now let's go and look at our other case, our second case or a second scenario here. Case two. This is where the market price here is less than the contracted price. So on 1231X1 here, the market price is now $2.70 a gallon here, while the contracted price here is $3 a gallon here. Now if the buyer expects us a loss here, the buyer expects us that they're going to lose here, uh, a loss will occur here when the purchase is in eff effected here. So whenever we make this purchase here in 20X2, we expect here, the, the buyer expects that they're going to incur a loss here. So what the buyer should do here is recognize the loss in the period during which such declines in market prices take place here. So let's go look at our examples here. So we had a drop here in our market price here on the end here of the year in 1231x1. Contracted price was $3 a gallon. It The market price, uh, it dropped here to the market. The market price is now $2.70 a gallon. Take that times the 80,000 gallons that we have contracted. The difference here is $24,000. So we have a drop in our market price here down to $2.70 a gallon. That's $24,000 here. So what has been uh, done here is there's a loss in the utility that has occurred during the period in which the market decline took place. So we have a loss in our utility here. So what we would do, we'd set up our balance sheet and our income statement here. And for this loss here, we'd recognize a, an estimated liability for this purchase commitment here. We'd credit it here for $24,000 on our balance sheet. And then the debit amount here would go on our income statement to our unrealized holding gain or losses here on these purchase commitments. And that would be for $24,000, that a loss here. Uh, in utility here. So uh, on our balance sheet, the estimated liability here, that's a current liability because we expect that here uh, within a year here to occur. And then uh, on our income statement, we would record this here as other expenses or losses here, this unrealized holding gain or loss on this purchase commitment. Next, we're going to go in and we'll look at the other scenarios. 
Now let's look at both case three and case four here. And this is how we'd record this uh, uh, shipment here of the uh, purchase commitment or that material we ordered here in 20X1. This is how we'd make a, uh, our entry here. And it's going to be based on uh, January 15th of year X2 or 20X2 here. And this is when this 80,000 gallon shipment is received here. And let's assume here that this $24,000 in our market decline entry was made here on 1231X one like we entered previously and we're going to be looking at our entry that we have to make here in 12 uh, 115 x2 here so first for case three here uh, this is where we would set up our inventory account here and we would be debiting it here for two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars and that's based on our market decline here or our market price here of two dollars and seventy cents we're just saying that carried right over here into January or January 15th of the year X2 this two dollars and seventy cents per gallon so our entry here on 12 Fifth or 115x2, that would be the raw materials at the actual cost here. So we had 80,000 gallons here at $2.70. That's the actual cost here at 115x2 in this example. So that gives us $216,000 here. So uh, we would debit our inventory account here for $216,000. And then the next thing we'd be looking at here is the, uh, we're buying it on account, let's just say on accounts payable, which is a liability here for this purchase here. Here. So that would be the contractual liability here for this purchase. So we had those 80,000 gallons here times the contractual amount here of $3 per gallon here. That's $240,000. So, so we'd be crediting our accounts payable here for $240,000. So what we would have here is a balancing entry that we need here between our debits and our credits here. And that would be to reduce this estimated liability here. So on on 1231x1, remember we had a credit amount here of $24,000, and that was based on that $2.70 per gallon. Now we still have the $2.70 per gallon here that we're using on 115x2, so what we would do here is we'd uh, credit, uh, debit this uh, $24,000 here in our, and reduce our estimated liability by that amount. That eliminates the uh, liability that we set up here in 1231x1. So our debit it's here uh, of tw of twelve twenty four thousand dollars here, and our debit amount here of two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars. That adds up to the credit amount here of two hundred and forty thousand dollars. Now let's look at our next uh, case here, case four. That's where we're going to have a partial recovery of of the contract price here. Let's just say, and a one fifteen x two. The uh, price here of this uh, material here is two dollars and eighty cents versus the two dollars and seventy cents here that we recorded on twelve thirty one x one. So let's look at that here. So again, for our raw material, that would be uh, entered here at the actual cost, the eighty thousand gallons here times the actual cost of two dollars and eighty cents is. $224,000. So we would debit that for $224,000. And then accounts payable, the same amount here, $240,000. That was the contracted liability here for this purchase, 80000 times $3 per gallon, $240,000. So uh, the only the balancing amount here would be to reduce our estimated liability only between the balance the the balancing amount here on 115x1. So we had $224,000 here in our debit amount here for inventory, credit amount here $240,000. So our estimated liability here would be debited or reduced here by $16,000. And you can see here, uh, if we had taken the difference here, uh, $224,000, the 80,000 gallons here times $2.80 is $224,000. That's the material value here. And if we uh, would subtract that here from the $240,000, the contracted amount here, you can see the difference here would be $16,000. And um, what we've done here by making this entry here by reducing our liability here. Uh, what that does here, we permit our operations here to be charged this year at 20x2 here for the, in this case, for that first uh, uh, scenario here at $216,000 here. The other $24,000 of the cost charged uh, to operations 
in 20x1. So uh, of the $240,000 here, uh, 20, uh, uh, 24,000 of it was charged here in 20x1, and then the, remain, uh, the remaining amount here of 216,000 here was charged here in 20x2.